Hello, my name is Ashley Bird, and I led a spiritual discussion group on the evening of Tuesday, April 24th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m. Five girls and I met around the table on the side porch of my house, which happens to be my favorite place at the house, where I'm sitting now, to discuss the idea of living a holy life and what barriers stop us from doing so. This kind of deep spiritual conversation was possible because friendships and trust had already been formed between most of the girls who participated in this group. Two of the women are co-workers of mine who are good friends with each other and with whom I have built solid friendships with our shared Christian faith as a foundation for these friendships. My sister and my cousin also joined the group, as did my other cousin's new girlfriend. It was good she happened to want to join because two of my coworkers had school functions change their date and time at the last minute. The setup was relatively easy thanks to my aunt's fabulous taste and comfortable porch furniture, and I bought some fruit and a cheese platter as well as had made chocolate chip cookies with my cousin the day before, which was a great feat because I was on day 23 of Whole30. I also made some hot herbal tea for anyone who wanted some. This group was created solely for the purpose of this assignment. I began the meeting by stating my intended purpose for the group discussion, as well as my hope that they would be willing to be vulnerable with the group for the sake of spiritual progress, despite the fact that this discussion could get deeper than a normal conversation, also emphasizing that confidentiality is important. I then read parts of Kathy Howard's article, Five Benefits of Living a Holy Life, which highlights biblical reasons to live holy lives. I talked a little bit about why I believe pursuing holiness is important, then assigned the girls to a partner to talk about why they think it is important to pursue holiness. I paired my two coworkers together because they were already good friends, my sister and my cousin together, and then I paired off with my other cousin's new girlfriend since she and I had developed a rapport in spiritual matters previously. After a few minutes, we all came back together and commented on something we talked about. Next, I read ex excerpts from Kabayas and McMenamin, Pursuing Holiness in an Unholy World, and Five Areas of Your Life Satan Wants to Enter, respectively. I discussed some general challenges Christians often face in their pursuit of holy living. Once again, I had the girls turn to their partner to discuss general challenges, then came back and did a round of commenting. I wanted to push the girls a little deeper because so often we get so caught up in ideas, it can be difficult to apply it directly to our lives. So I began to talk about specific challenges I face. After another few minutes of dyad and round activity, I talked about the importance of doing something about what, what we may have learned or admitted to ourselves. Awareness is one thing, but the true victory is godly change. Once again returning to their partner, I had the ladies come up with one or two ideas for how they would like to implement change in their lives. This run was the most fun because it involved a level of creativity, which prompted lively and fun conversation. It also helped us wrap up the evening on a lighter note. This was especially fun because the topic is quite heavy. Everyone walked away with tools to help them more tangibly pursue a life of holiness. Overall, I think I did a pretty good job leading this group. My biggest challenge was getting one of the women to talk to the whole group. She told me before the meeting that she has a tendency to shut down in groups. I was a little sad to hear that because from previous conversations I've had with her, I know that she is spiritually mature and full of godly wisdom, and I was really looking forward to hearing her insight on the topic. Because I knew she would not feel as comfortable in the group as she would if it was just her, our other coworker, and I, I paired her with our coworker during the diet exercises in order to foster feelings of comfort and safety. I did directly ask her to contribute to the whole group by commenting on what she and her partner discussed during the dyads, but since these comments could be formulated better than vulnerable processing talk, she felt more comfortable contributing. All of the women were open to being incredibly vulnerable with each other during the dyads, which I found impressive considering it was a mod podge of women I am friends with, but who are not necessarily friends with each other. I was really proud of the work we did together as a group type towards prioritizing a holy life. I wish I could have gone even deeper with some of the things that came up, especially with my cousin who offered mostly churchy answers, but a time constraint prevented me from doing so. 
My biggest takeaway from this exercise is that I am capable of leading a discussion group. I was very nervous and wondered if anyone would get anything out of it, but it turned out really well. This exercise gave me the confidence I need if I ever lead another group. I did not really have to practice any confrontational skills, such as cutting members off, but uh, so I will need to continue to practice those things. But the fact that it went well overall was a big step for me. I learned preparation is key, and I think I will look forward to leading a group the next time an opportunity arises. Thank you so much.